Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today I'm talking about thermal cameras. Yes, we've taken a look at a few on the channel. You might remember a while back I reviewed this Kaiweitz KTI W02 thermal imaging camera. It's a really great camera. It's really robustly made, and I love how it looks and feels. It's got a real good feature set on this, including some really amazing software. The only thing I really found that was lacking from this otherwise excellent thermal camera was a macro lens. It was a real shame we couldn't get up close and personal with the components on the PCBs we were looking at. So it got me to thinking, what can we do about that? Can we do something to improve this camera to make it even better? So you've already got a high resolution on this, 256 by 192, and you've got that image enhancement with the super resolution. So I've had a further look into this to see what we can do about getting a macro capability on this camera. So let's get this thermal camera over on the bench and take a closer look, see what we can do. Now, I really quite like this thermal camera from Kaiwi. It's, it's robust, it feels really solid, and it's quite heavy, and it's got a great battery life. But for electronics, the only thing it's missing is a macro lens. It's a real shame it doesn't have a macro lens because you can get those real close-ups, and this has that image enhancement that takes the image quality up to 512. So it got me to thinking, right? Well cameras have a macro lens could we not use a camera lens apparently not so a regular macro lens like this one that fits a normal camera this will work great on your camera you can see you can see stuff close up it's brilliant but it won't work on a thermal camera because the lenses that they use on cameras well pretty much any lens will block infrared radiation which is what thermal cameras detect so thermal cameras require lenses that are made of other materials, not glass, generally germanium or zinc selenide. See, these are designed to focus visible light, but your thermal camera is designed to detect infrared radiation, which has a much longer wavelength than visible light does. So most common lens materials like glass are actually opaque to infrared radiation, meaning they block it rather than transmitting it. Now this stops the infrared image from reaching the thermal sensor, so you're not gonna see anything. So if I point this at my power supply, we've got a great view there, that's lovely. So if I take my regular macro camera lens and put it in front of the infrared camera sensor, you can see it's actually completely blocking the light. It's letting the visible light through, but what it's not letting through is the infrared radiation. You can see when I remove that lens, yeah, you've got your image back, so you cannot use a regular macro lens from your camera on a thermal camera. It just won't work. So the lenses on these are made from materials like germanium or zinc selenide, which are transparent to infrared radiation. These materials are unfortunately more expensive and less common than standard lens materials. So while these are readily available and cheap, they're gonna be no good for this. Any kind of glass lens you put in front of this is gonna block the infrared radiation, which is what we're picking up. What we need is a lens made of zinc selenide or germanium. Now, germanium lenses are available. You can pick them up. I have found one on AliExpress. Here we go, for the sum of 19 pounds 88 including shipping. This particular one is 3D printed, I believe, and it is designed to fit the face of this camera. It's rather exciting. So, now because this is made from germanium, it will also pass infrared, unlike our standard macro camera lens. So, this is made so it should just snap on the front. I guess there's someone out there that 3D prints these surrounds to go on these cameras but this one is designed to fit on this particular type of thermal camera. All right so let's have a glance over we can see things are getting hot here's our bridge rectifiers. So from this sort of distance we can see them really clearly but if you go closer in you can see where we could really do with the macro lens but when you go close in it's a bit blurry it's a bit out of focus. So let's try this with our third party macro lens. Okay, because we know we've got good resolution. We've got 256 by 192. 
let's make sure we're on super resolution mode we are fantastic right now let's go in with the macro and yes look at that that is awesome look you can see the part number on it that is fantastic look at that that's what we were missing on this camera really good camera it was just missing the macro lens look at the detail i can see the markings on that resistor you could see that on the thermal camera you could see that is a 47r resistor there that's absolutely amazing detail if i get in up close and personal look at that you could see the part number this is exactly what we needed right here it's the one thing that the Kiwitz was missing was that macro so that was what did i pay i think i said 18 pounds for this so, okay it's white and it doesn't quite match this is a third party one so i'm gonna let kiwitz know how good this is on their camera and i'll let you know what they come back with because i think that's a, an amazing improvement i've always liked this camera since i first used it i like the way it feels in the hand it's really steady it's sturdy it feels well made and it's got some great functions and i love that function with the software that you can use but i'm sure they can come up with something because this is awesome the detail that you can get so there you go it just goes to show with a bit of trial and error you can make something that's good even better it's a great device and i think just adding a macro lens to it like that so simple what a great tool love that okay so here we go with our noisy test amplifier when you get in close it's a little bit out of focus let's just try with our third party macro lens oh yeah look at that you can make out the shape of the heat sink look you can see this power transistor you can actually see the legs and the the shape of it and i can see this little capacitor here you can see the shape of them can't you actually lets you get right in close that's pretty awesome oh you can actually see the top of that cap you can see all the detail in the fins on the top of the heatsink without the lens and yeah you can't see the detail all right let's try the old dell laptop motherboard with the macro right about there that's cool isn't it you can see all the little surface mount components around it yeah so you'd be able to, that's good enough that you could identify where that area of heat is where these diodes are down here look look at this that's fantastic that's awesome you can really get in there and see where the heat areas are that's pretty awesome you can get right on in there you can see exactly what those components are you'd have no trouble trying to work out what they are from one to another you can see that's a transistor from the shape of it something's getting hot down here one of these resistors look that one's getting hot that one's not is that a problem well might be something you want to look at It'd be nice if it if you could make it like hinge out so you could just flip it back and forth because a little bit fiddly getting it on and off all the time but it does do the job and definitely if you want to get right on in there and inspect your pcb that's pretty flipping awesome so there you go kti w02 from kiwitz plus a third party macro lens equals a really excellent tool for fault finding and pcb inspection as you saw from the still images i captured in the video you can get real up close and personal with the components even to the point where you can read component identification numbers with just the thermal camera that's pretty impressive so i have approached kiwitz about this because i think it's an excellent idea i think it's an excellent product as i said before i really do love this camera i'm a big fan of it it's got a really long battery life and it feels really robust to use because of the shape of it personally i find that's easier to get down into what i'm working on i like the fact you can just press the trigger and take images as well i think that's really handy so i'll see what kiwi's come back with and i'll update the end of this video to let you know what they say because i think this is a great camera and it's great for general distance use for infrared for checking out fuse boxes and stuff like that but for close-up work with a macro lens, 
I reckon this is going to be pretty darn good. So quick update, I've heard back from Kai Wheats regarding the macro lens and it seems pretty positive. It seems like they're taking a look into being able to include this in the future. What they actually said was regarding the macro lens, we're currently evaluating the possibility of offering it as an optional accessory in the future based on the feedback that they've had, including mine. They're also looking at the feasibility of including a macro lens on new models in the future, depending on feasibility and demand. So if I get any further updates from Kaiwitz on this, I'll let you know. In the meantime, the KTI W02 is back in stock. So if you want to pick yourself up one, I will leave the link and a discount code in the video description down below. I'll also leave the link in the video description for the germanium lens that I picked up from AliExpress in case you do want to get yourself one of these and pick yourself up a macro lens. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And as always, massive thanks Thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking and subscribing. And of course, big thanks to all of my YouTube members. Don't forget, you can also support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee, which helps to support the channel and keeps me making more cool tech videos. I'll be back soon with another tech related video. But in the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.